Ye old call to worship, eh? On the silver trumpets, where do we find that? Yeah, it's in the Bible. It's a good place to start. Come on, you guys got to, come on, you guys got to get on this. What else do you have to know but the Word of God? If you want to know God, you got to know His Word. It's all you got, right? Otherwise, you might have fables and myths and wives' tales. You don't know, right? But this, this you could be assured of, right? I, I, would, I would tell you, you know, I, I, uh, I really struggled um, when I was young. We didn't know, I'm 58, that, you know, I had, I had this massive... ADHD. They didn't know back then, um, but I did. I could not read. I was always in the classes that were the slow classes in the Bronx. You know those classes where just everybody was running around and screaming and fighting, and I just struggled. We didn't know. We didn't know. So, um, but when something crazy happened, but <laughs> in in the summer of between second and third grade. I was hit with something in my head and actually split my head open. And the cranial experts say that one in a million cases, you actually get smarter. And um, I just started to be able to memorize. I started to go into the smartest classes. And I started to excel, excel scholastically. Now, I'm telling you, if you have a slow child, I'm not telling you to hit him with a baseball bat. I'm, not, I'm clearly not saying that to you. Um, but when I started to read the Bible, I don't know, I, could, I just couldn't get enough of it. I couldn't, I couldn't get enough of it, and, and, and I've never gotten over that. But if I were you, just, just so you, for your own edification, for your own peace of mind, I would really do a study. If you want to do the greatest study, do a study on the, on the authenticity of the Scripture. Now, every, every piece of literature that you read, whether it, you read something, a, a medical document in the New England Journal of Medicine, a textbook at school, a magazine article, it has to have some literary authenticity. And there's three legitimate tests for that. So if you do the study on the Bible, you're going to flip out how much internal evidence, external evidence, and bibliographical evidence. Now you might be saying, look, I don't need that. No, sir, you do. Listen to me. You can't tell people it's in the Bible, so that settles it. Because then they'll say it's in the New World Translation, that settles it. It's in the Bhagavad Gita, that settles it. It's in the Book of Mormon, that settles it. It's in the Quran, that settles it. It's in the Talmud, that settles it. You follow? So if everybody feels that way, how are you going to have a discussion? You owe it to yourself. And you owe it to God. To see how incredibly authentic the Word of God is. In fact, there's more literary proof for the Word of God than all the volumes of books put together. That's crazy. See, I, I did that study, so that's why I'm so emphatic about the Word of God. Anyway, on, that's, that's that. We, we got over that? Good. Um, who thinks this is going to be a great day? Me. I, I, I just, I just want to, I have a little inside track. This is going to be a great day. This is really going to be a great day. On, on a lot of fronts. The Lord has something very special uh, to share with us, and I'm crazy excited about it. Um, with that being said, I'd love to read you a psalm that's just a happy psalm, like, like Psalm 144, 145, I really would, just a happy psalm. But the Lord steered me in a different direction this morning, and, and I think it might be for somebody here. It might be for somebody out there. You know, we have way more people out there than in here, thousands and thousands that are tuning in, I want to say Shabbat Shalom. And if it's, if it's for you, if it's for you, do me a favor just so I know I'm hearing. Um, send an email to the office and, um, and say, yes, that, that psalm was for you. This psalm is actually, I don't know if I'd, I'd call it a psalm. It's more like a prayer. And I'm going to share, it's only 11 verse, 12 verses, but I'm going to share one verse with you that I want to highlight, that this is the greatest lever you have to move the hand of God when you pray. Would anybody like to know what that is? How many people pray? How many people have unanswered prayers? How many would like to know a biblical lever on how to move the hand of God? All right, sounds good. Okay, so this is, this is, a, this is David speaking. And he says, Adonai, hear my prayer. Listen to my plea for mercy. So he's right out of the gate. He's, he sounds a little desperate, yes? And I'm sure there's at least one person that's watching that that is a little desperate 
So he says, I don't know, hear my prayer, listen to my pleas. He's begging for mercy, begging, which is a great way to start. You know, that's not popular anymore to beg for mercy. It's more like, hey, you owe me. Even, even this entitlement principle has infiltrated the church. Then he says, same verse one, he says, in your faithfulness, answer me, and in your righteousness. Don't ever say to God, you need to, don't ever say that. He doesn't need to do anything. We need so always, always profess his faithfulness because we're not faithful and always profess his righteousness because we're not completely righteous. So far, so good? Okay. Then he says, don't bring your servant to trial since in your sight no one alive would be considered righteous. Why does he say don't bring me to trial? You, you don't want to go to God and say, look, I'm praying to you. You owe me this based on my... Don't do it. It's not like God will get mad. It's just, it's like... It's end of discussion. You follow? This is Psalm 143, by the way. Go home and study it. It's, it's, it's as good as anything else in the Bible, but it's really good. For an enemy is pursuing me. He has crushed my life into the ground and left me to live in darkness. This is a crisis situation. This is an emergency. Like those who have been long dead. My spirit faints within me. My heart is appalled within me. He's desperado. I remember my days of old, reflecting on, on your deeds, thinking about the works of your hands. He's reminiscing, but this is what you want to do. You want to remember, when you're in darkness, you want to remember all the light that God has put into your life. You follow what I mean? It's very important for you to reminisce, to remind your soul how good God has been. Remind him of all the times he delivered you. You follow? Don't. Deny in the darkness what, what you once believed in the light. Follow? This is why God delivers you so the next time you're trapped, you can remember the deliverances. You follow? Come on, somebody. Hear what I'm saying. I spread out my hands to you. I long for you like in a thirsty land. He's desperate and it's intense. It's getting very deep. He says, answer me quickly, Adonai, because my spirit is fainting. Urgent. There's an urgency. Don't hide your face from me. I'll be like those who drop down into a pit. Make me hear of your love in the morning because I rely on you. Make me know the way I should walk. That should be our motto. Isn't that a great prayer? Make me know the way I should walk. Because I entrust myself to you. Adonai, rescue me. Deliver me from my enemies. I have hidden myself with you. I have nobody but you. Nobody. There's no plan B. Teach me to do your will. Not teach me to know your will. A lot of people know God's will. They tell me all the time, I know God's will. I go, are you doing it? I know all about exercise. You ain't going to get nothing out of it until you do a push-up. <laughs> Teach me to do your will because you are my God. You are my God. Let your good spirit guide me on ground that is level. Now listen, this is the one of the strongest levers to move the hand of God. This is verse 11. We're almost done. For your name's sake, Adonai, preserve my life. Now, you can't bluff. This isn't an amulet. You can't pray and go, God, for your name, deliver me. If you don't mean it, it's not going to mean nothing to him. You follow? Guys, I know that we're in the 21st century. I get this is America, okay? I don't see it that way. I'm a biblical believer. I could care less what century it is, and I could care less what country I'm in. Okay? It's all about God's great name. It is not about you. You must put yourself aside. You must put yourself aside. you got to try. It's all for his great name. God has made everything for his glory, even evil for the day of destruction. It's all about God's great name. It's all about his great reputation. If we realized that, we'd walk differently. We'd act differently. We'd represent correctly. For your name's sake, oh God. For your rep. For your name's sake, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of distress. In your grace, cut off my enemies. Some of your versions say, in your loving kindness, destroy those who are harassing me. How could grace and love and kindness be in the same sentence with destruction? Let me ask you something. Somebody breaks into your house, they're looking to kill you, the cops come, they arrest him, and they put him in jail. Is that a good thing? Please, somebody say yes. 
please. Okay? A, 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 a law enforcement officer just moved into my neighborhood. I stopped him and I said, you're law enforcement, right? And, you know, they, they've got to put their hand on their gun. You know why? Because so many people are horrible to them. They treat them horrifically. They think they're the problem. Do you know why you're sitting here right now comfortably? Because there's cops around willing to put their life on the line for 40 grand a year. Would you do it? I'll give you 40 grand, strap a gun, go ahead. You got to talk to them. You got to tell them. So I said, look, I live in the neighborhood you just moved in. Listen to me. It is an honor, a deep, deep honor to have you in my neighborhood. Then he started looking at me like this. I said, look, I'm not a wacko. Okay, I've lived here 15 years. Okay, don't talk to too many people in, in Macon because they'll tell you I'm whack, but I'm not. I said, I teach my kids how important your job is. If they see you, they're going to go up to you and say thank you. When my kids were little, and if a cop was in a restaurant, they'd walk up and say thank you. I said, you don't get paid enough. Anything I could do for you. You follow? When they put these got bad guys away, they're blessing society. The destruction of the wicked is a mercy to the universe. You follow? Don't, don't make God all love. That's one of his characteristics. But when he comes back, it's going to be all wrath. You've got to tell the whole story, guys. You've got to know the whole story, and you've got to share the whole story. Because bits and pieces of the truth is not the truth. Don't paint God in the picture that you want him to be. Read his word and find out who he is. Then you'll know him. You won't know him any other way. So in your grace, Lord, cut off my enemies. Destroy all those who are harassing me because I'm your servant. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this day, this Shabbat, a day that you set aside. You said this would be a sign like a ring, a sign between you and Israel, that as they celebrated Shabbat, it would be a sign of, of, their, of their blessed wedding vows that they took with you and you took with them. You said it would be a special day. You said that we could just rest in you. You'd rest, we'd rest, and we'd be together. Father, on this day we declare that you created the earth. We declare that you defeated sin, death, and the grave. We declare that you resurrected. We declare that we will resurrect. So, so resurrect us today, Father, spiritually speaking. People are tired, Lord. They're, they're haggard. They're spending way too much time on things that don't count. They're internet crazed, social media crazed. They can't get enough of it. They'll spend three, four hours, Father, on the internet, and they won't give you five minutes to read a verse. And they wonder, why am I so tired? Come on, man. Give God his due. Father, what a, what a pleasure it is. I don't know how I got here. Not in Macon. I don't know how I got to be in the kingdom. I don't know how I got there. I don't know how I got here, but man, I'm so glad I'm here. Amen. It's phenomenal. Amen. Crazy. I used to be afraid of you. Now I call you Abba Daddy. This is crazy. Let my people get it, Father. Let them get it today. In Yeshua's name, amen.